What's up everyone and welcome back to another video where I'll be sharing with you five builds based on the iconic Pokemon franchise. I figure that with Ash finally becoming world champion and with the release of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, there's no better time than now for a video like this. So I hope you all enjoy each of these builds. Our trainer minifigure is ready to go with his bicycle and Pokeball, so let's get into it. Starting off with one of the most iconic things from the Pokemon franchise, we have the Pokeball. The biggest challenge for this build was capturing the round shape of a Pokeball in Lego form. And to help me do this, I started this build by referencing an online guide for how to build a Lego ball. The guide is from user Sherry K. Hey Hey on instructables.com, which I'll link down in the description. But of course, things weren't as simple as just looking at the guide because I had to make this actually look like a Pokeball with its red, white, and black color scheme and other details. In the original guide, you had to start by making these six sides for the circle, but I had to customize these by splitting each in half with a red and white side, along with the black stripe cutting through the center. After that, I had to use some of these snot bricks to connect all the sides and add the button and ring to the front. It works out that this Pokeball is nearly the perfect size and it rolls around quite well. It's a simple build, but one that I think turned out really well, and definitely captures the look of the original. Moving on to another absolute essential for any up-and-coming trainer, we have Ash's original Pokedex, which will allow you to keep track of all the wild Pokemon you run into on your journey. I grew up with the original Indigo League series, so I decided to build that version, even though there's been a ton of different ones since then. The original is still my favorite. Like the Pokeball, this is another build that's really close to the actual size of the original. It's three Lego bricks wide and about 14 bricks tall. I use these hinge pieces to allow it to open up as well. Inside, you'll find all of the buttons matching up with the original's design as well, at least in the closest way I could come up with. Some of the buttons, like these two, are a bit wide, but overall, I think they all translate really well. To allow the Pokedex to close up with the buttons on both sides, I had to use some snot techniques with some bracket pieces that allow the buttons to recess down into the model. Some of my favorite details are the lights on the top of the model, particularly this round blue piece. In the show, some of those are light indicators that could have been made with translucent pieces, but I went ahead and used solid bright colors to match the show's art style. One last challenging part of the build was making the door angled like ashes. For the hinges, I had to use white pieces because I don't have any red ones in my collection, but that's enough said for the Pokedex. If you're enjoying the video so far, be sure to like it, as it will help me know whether or not to continue this series with a part 2. I only have time to make so many videos, and I want to produce what fans of the channel enjoy. For our next build, we're moving down to minifigure scale with this Poke Center. Unlike the Pokedex, the exterior of this Poke Center isn't based on any specific Poke Center from the games or TV show, of which there have been a lot. Rather, I decided to make my own customized version that still follows the general theming that we see throughout most of the series. The exterior is made with a lot of glass windows, similar to the Poke Centers that we see in the later generations, and I liked getting the opportunity to use the angled corner pieces, which I've never used before. The roof has a mix of regular roof slopes and curved slope pieces, but my favorite part of the exterior is the roof's red and white Poke Center sign that is backed with these curved window pieces that give the roof a unique shape that is fitting for the Pokemon style. Inside the Poke Center, you'll find Nurse Joy waiting to take care of your Pokemon. Nurse Joy is using Harley Quinn's torso and legs, along with her nurse hat, which is an exclusive piece that has never been used again, but is the perfect fit for Nurse Joy. Next to her, you'll find the machine that is used to heal your Pokemon of all wounds and battle ailments, such as burns and paralysis. I made sure to build it so that it could fit all six Pokeballs, since that's the maximum number you can carry in the games. Behind Nurse Joy, I included this Ninja Turtle stickered piece that I think worked out really well to show a Pokemon's different evolutions. I also used a couple of the Friends Medical Cross pieces that are often found in veterinary clinic sets to go along with the medical theming. Anyone who's played the first two generations of Pokemon will recognize this as Bill's PC, where you'll be able to access your stored Pokemon along with your various items. Other details in the Poke Center include this cabinet of items such as potions, this glass table, and this bush. And before you leave, don't forget to say bye to Nurse Joy, who will be sure to tell you, we hope to see you again which is actually kind of creepy when you think about it. Outside of the Poke Center, I also included this old man as a reference to the one in the first generation that teaches you how to catch Pokemon. Moving on to our fourth build, we have the Pokemon Stadium. 
This build is a bit of a unique one, because it's not based on something directly from the Pokemon show or games. As some of you have probably already realized, it's the Pokemon Stadium from Super Smash Bros, which developed the stage based on all of the various versions of the Pokemon Stadiums from the original Pokemon Stadium games, as well as the animated series. But it's such an iconic location related to Pokemon that I had to include it. To start this build, I began with the huge Pokeball floor that takes up the majority of the stadium's field. To build it, I googled 8-bit circle and found this image, which I used as a reference point. Basically, I scaled this picture to each individual square equaling one brick width and two plates high, which forms a nice cube shape. I also wanted to make sure that the top and bottom of the Pokeball were the same length as the left and right sides, and I really lucked out because that original image's sides are six squares wide, and it just so happens that six studs wide in LEGO is equal to five bricks tall. The interior circle build for the Pokemon's button was a bit more of a challenge, even though it's small and the final product is super simple looking. Before landing on that simple look for the button, I tried about five different builds, all of which were much more intensive than the final product, which I guess just goes to show that sometimes the simplest build can be the most effective. Beyond the Pokeball, you'll find these white stripes that are on the original as well that help to break up the huge swaths of green, and I certainly had to include the floating platforms as well, which are held up by some clear bricks and are detailed with some red lights. The entire stadium is set atop a base of black bricks to suspend it within the air, an essential feature of the original, where knocking opponents into oblivion is the key objective. Some of the Pokemon I've posed here battling are Gollum, Magnemite, and Caterpie. Of the four Pokemon I've made for this video, Magnemite turned out to be my favorite build. He's surprisingly simple, but translated into LEGO really well. His core piece is an all-sided snot brick, which has a couple of attached clips and dish pieces. The magnets on each side of him are composed of minifigure phone pieces, and his eye is made with a hollow white stud. However, my favorite part to his build is the bolt on top of his head, which is actually a minifigure syringe threaded through the snot brick. I also made sure to use hollow studs on his sides so that I could thread in some electric pieces for him to be able to use moves like Thunderbolt. Fighting against Magnemite in the arena is Hitmonchan, the boxing Pokemon. He's using Groot's head from Guardians of the Galaxy, which turned out to be a pretty close match to his original shaping. I gave him these red shoulder pads, which should be brown, and are actually part of the Pokemon's body. For his torso and legs, I'm using Kingsley's from Harry Potter. Hitmonchan is one of my all-time favorite Pokemon, and I'm satisfied with how he turned out. For another brick-built Pokemon in the stadium, we have Gollum, who is looking quite wide if I do say so myself. Out of all the Pokemon I made for this video, he uses the most interesting techniques. I used these two rock base pieces, which have a bar sized hole in them, so I threaded a bar through him to create a foundation that I could build out from. For his arms and legs, I'm using these clip pieces, and his head is just a one by one plate and a cheese slope. I've always found it hard to make brick built creatures and characters look natural and not just overly blocky, and that's definitely the case here, but that's also just part of the the fun of working with LEGO. For a couple of last details with the stadium, I included these gray slopes that on the original look like mechanical clamps. If you remove two of them, you can slide the entire green field out of the stand and use the field just on its own, which is convenient for posing minifigures and things like that. Moving on to our fifth and final build for today's video, we have a portion of one of the routes that you'd find in one of the video games. This is the simplest of today's builds, but was still a fun one to make. It includes tall grass, where you'll definitely encounter Pokemon, and you can bet money that if you walk in front of bug catcher Charlie here, he's gonna want to battle. To show this in LEGO form, I had to make the iconic exclamation mark that appears over a trainer's head once you take one step in front of them, which in spite of my love for the games, can get really annoying after a while. Now you may be thinking, Brad, all of your Pokemon builds so far have been pretty close to minifigure scale, but that Caterpie's too big. But that's where you'd be wrong. You see, Bugcatcher Charlie loves his Caterpie so much that he gave it an Everstone and trained it all the way to level 97, and also taught it Hyper Beam, and that's why it's three times the size of a normal Caterpie. For the build, it's pretty straightforward using these rounded lime dome pieces and circular yellow plates to give it some coloring. To make its tail gradually smaller, I'm using Brainiac's head. On the front of Caterpie, there's a hot dog to match the red antenna we see on the original. I got that idea from Myth77's build on Flickr, but the rest of the design is custom. If you're able to beat Bugcatcher Charlie, you can continue down the path, but you'll find yourself running into a tree, which can only be removed if you have a Pokemon in your party that knows Cut. However, since Cut is a terrible move, you stored that Pokemon in the piece PC, so it looks like you'll be hiking all the way back to Lavender Town just to get a Pokemon so that you can remove that stupid tree. 
I don't usually use pre-made tree pieces, but since the original graphics are super simple in the games, I thought that it'd be fitting here. For some final notes, Bugcatcher Charlie is using a minifigure hat piece from LEGO Swamp Police and also has a customized bug catching net. However, if you're lucky enough to have one of these butterfly net pieces, it'd look even more like the original. And anyways guys, that's gonna do it for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed it. The builds in this one have probably been my favorite so far for this channel. It was really nostalgic for me to go back and revisit so many of the memories that I have with Pokemon and even Smash Bros. If you have ideas for Pokemon you'd like to see in a future episode or different locations, please tell me in the comments. And until next time, see you later.